An Oklahoma case goes before the Supreme Court again. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh and McKee, and this is Ian and Now. And I'm Melissa Carter. The appeal of death row inmate Richard Glossop will be heard at the nation's highest court this week. For details, we go to Tulsa and ENN's Gracie Thompson. According to the Associated Press, Richard Glossop had nine execution dates set. He has been fed three last meals, but each time he has avoided execution. Glossop's case goes to the Supreme Court Wednesday as he seeks the, to overturn his murder conviction and death sentence in 1997. Murder for Hire Scheme Oklahoma Attorney General Gedner Drummond is on his side. Drummond has said he does not think Glossop is innocent but does not believe he got a fair trial. He says prosecutors knew a witnesses lied on the stand and evidence was destroyed. More than half a dozen states have asked the Supreme Court to uphold the conviction, saying the federal court should respect state court decisions. In Tulsa, I'm Gracie Thompson. According to the Oklahoma, Oklahoma Justices Norma Gurich, Yvonne Cogger, and James Edmondson are the targets of an ad campaign that aims to convince voters to against keeping them. The Oklahoma reported the group behind this campaign is People for Opportunity, which lists several members of Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs, a nonprofit organization that is known for its conservative political leanings. The Federal Tax Commission shows that the group has spent at least $156,000 so far, another $85,000 to air their ads during the OU and Texas football game on October 12th. According to the Oklahoman, the, the Judicial Code of Ethics says judges up for a retention vote cannot campaign until they are facing active opposition. If the justices are removed, Gov Governor Kevin Stitt would get to name replacements. According to the Oklahoman, two shootings occurred in Bricktown, which caused five victims to be sent to the hospital in serious to critical conditions. The first shooting happened at around Saturday night, around 9.30, and while investigating the first shooting, another one followed, this time at 11 p.m., nearly two hours apart. Police don't know the cause for the first shooting. However, the second shooting, police say, started due to an argument. In the aftermath, the police arrested three people and recovered two guns. Police are not sure if the shootings were separate or somehow connected. <clears throat> there are questions about the State Department of Education decision to purchase Bibles for every classroom in Oklahoma. For details, here's ENN's Harrison Favero. Oklahoma State Superintendent Ryan Walters plans to purchase 55,000 Bibles for public schools. However, according to the nonprofit news website, Oklahoma Watch, the details of the bid require the Bibles to meet specific criteria, such as a durable leather binding and pages that include historical materials. According to Oklahoma Watch, the requirements don't align with any Bibles sold by popular Christian retailer Mardell, but the requirements do align with the God Bless the USA Bible, a version promoted by former President Donald Trump. When asked if the bid was designed exclusively for the Trump-endorsed Bible, a spokesperson for Walter stated that the proposal remains open to any vendor. This Bible initiative has encountered significant opposition from major school districts across the state, and the ACLU and other non-religious groups have announced plans to request re records from the Department of Education with the potential to file legal action in the future. Another big weekend for sports fans and basketball fans are gearing up for the start of the season. For details, here's ANN Sports Director J.J. Stinn. The Cowboys are now 0-3 in Big 12 play following their second blowout loss in a row this time at home against West Virginia, the game ending 38-14. The Pokes now head into their bye week looking to figure things out with angry fans and questions at quarterback along with multiple injuries to star players. OU did not play due to their bye week and will now head to Texas for a matchup with the number one team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, in the first Red River rivalry game with both teams in the SEC. Ahead of their first preseason games, the OKC Thunder hosted the Thunder Fan Fest on Sunday. The event showcased many artworks and displays featuring players' game day shoes and local artists. The event also had an opportunity for fans to win some gear or buy some and meet the Thunder Girls. Also, if Thunder fans participated in the FanFest prize digital kiosk, they could end up with four tickets to Denver for the season opener, with all expenses being paid for the trip. Now looking ahead to their first preseason game, the Thunder will be without SGA and Lou Dort, meaning that fans could see both new additions Isaiah Hartenstein and Alex Caruso in the starting lineup. 
The Thunder will play three of their five preseason games this week, including one at the BOK Center in Tulsa against the New Zealand Breakers. With fall break approaching, there are a lot of fall activities for everyone. Renee Collins in our Tulsa Bureau has all the info for the next two weeks. There's a lot of fun planned for the next two weeks. In Tulsa, the Oklahoma City Thunder will be playing the New Zealand Breakers in their preseason game on October 10th. Jelly Roll will perform October 18th. The Tulsa Oilers will begin their long-awaited hockey season on October 19th. At the Tulsa Performing Arts Center, MJ the Musical will make its way through town on October 15th and will stay until October 20th. In Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City Thunder plays the Houston Rockets on October 9th at the Paycom Center, followed by Hot Wheels Monster Trucks Live Glow Party and another Thunder game on the 17th. And that's everything on the calendar so you can have an epic week. There are also a lot of activities for epic students this weekend. For our epic news, we turn to ENN's Banning Lutzenberger. Fall break is next week, but before the break, Epic is gearing up for some school field trips. These next few weeks, some of which including a field trip to the Museum of Osteology, where you'll be able to, to dissect owl pellets on October 18th, the Epic Beginning Rocket the Readiness Play Group on October 21st, and the field trip to Express Clydesdale Farm in Yukon on November 1st. And also, don't forget fall break is next week, which means Epic offices will be closed the following Wednesday through Friday. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us, and make sure to keep checking our website and social media pages for more news from our team of student journalists.